Okay, uh, this is Gilbert and Frank's amazing colossal obsessions once again recording at Nutmeg with our engineer Frank Verderosa. You didn't even identify yourself. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and I'm here with my um companion. <laughs> Frank, Frank said to Padre. Unknown companion. Yes. Longtime his, companion. His male companion. Yeah. Uh, I'm just grateful Padre. that this podcast has helped make me just famous enough that if the two of us die in a car accident, that the headline in the post doesn't say comedian Gilbert Gottfried and unknown companion. <laughs> Unknown passenger, <laughs> which is one of my greatest fears. So thank you for that, Gil. Yes. I, I, well, I'll always owe you that. Uh, by the way, someone approached me today and told me they were a big fan of yours, and that, that uh, and that their father was a big fan of yours, which is which is uh, mind blowing. And and that was Sammy Davis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Bojangles Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> it was a famous person, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you off mic who it was. Um, this is producer of the month, uh, suggested by one of our listeners, Ray Gustini. Yes, he's one of mine. Before uh-huh. you make a crack, G U S T I N E could be Justini, but then it would have an I in the before the U. Ray Gustini says he wants to be producer of the month for the for the month of January, and he came up with a very interesting premise. He said, why don't you guys do a show and try to stump Gilbert actors who only directed one movie? Ah. What do you think of that premise? Okay. I'm not really sure. wheels are turning. Paul, I sent you an email about ah. it, so you might know. Right. You might know a few. Okay. We're going to see how many you know. Starting, I'm going to do them chronologically, and if we run out of time, we'll do more on a future episode. Well, like, didn't Nicholson do the sequel he did. to Chinatown? I think he directed more than once. He oh. did the two Jakes. Oh, and he did that one he with did... John Travolta. Not John Travolta. Uh, uh, John Belushi. He did the Western, Going South. Yeah, yeah. So that's two. Yeah. Okay. At least two. He might have directed. He did another one called Drive, he said. Oh, yes. So that's three with for Nicholson. Bruce Stern was in that. Right, but these are these are actors that are maybe a little less known yeah. than somebody like Jack Nicholson. We'll start with this. The Lost One from 1951. Peter Laurie? Look at you. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's much more fun when he guesses it than when I sit here talking to myself. He, he, he directed that in Germany. He did in West Germany. Yeah. And and they said Laurie was, you know, he was a talented guy, but a horrible businessman. Was he? Yeah. And what what kind of director was and, he? And I think I I don't know what they thought of his directing, but they said he lost a lot of money. Have you seen this yeah. picture? I I maybe have a seen a German it. scientist murders his fiance when he finds she's been selling his research secrets to the enemy. With a German cast, I looked, I scrolled down, I said, okay, let me throw him some actors to give him a hint. They were all German actors. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have known any of them. No. You've not seen the picture, but you knew the picture. Yeah. How did yeah. you know this? I remember he directed The Lost One. Very good. And, and yeah, lost a uh, shitload on it. How about that? Okay. Anything on The Lost One, Paul, while I'm jumping onto I, the next movie. Here's you. one. I know where Gilbert's going to go with this. I won't even tell you the title of this one. It's the only picture directed by Charles Lawton. Oh, 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 oh was was this the courtroom? No, no. that was. You mean thinking a witness for the prosecution? Oh, wait, that was Billy wait, Wilder. with Robert Mitchum? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Cape Fear. No, no, uh, no, no. Cape Fear was directed by J. Lee Thompson. Oh, you're, okay. You're getting your Mitchum thrillers mixed up. This is the one where he was the preacher, looking for the the That's looking it. for the hidden yes. cash. Where he had love and hate on his, uh, you are correct. On his Cinerama breath, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Night of the Hunter. Yes. Yes. Hunter. Yes. Uh, a corrupt preacher looking for a hidden ten thousand dollars in cash. Uh, charms a widow and her children in an attempt to find it, based on the story of a real killer. Wow. Based on the story of a man named Harry Powers, who was hanged in 1932 for the murder of two widows uh, in West Virginia. Great film. Yeah. Terrifying performance. 
Um, Mitchum, Shelley Winters, Lillian Gish. Wow. Screenplay uh, by James Ag. Script by the Pulitzer winner James Ag. Yeah, how about that? And the critic, another guy who had a sad uh, died died early, died in the forties. James Ag. And and allegedly Charles Lawton liked to eat shit sandwiches. You know, I how yeah. did I know you were going to go there? <laughs> <laughs> He'd have these young guys take a shit on two slices of bread, and he would add lettuce and tomato to it. Well. <laughs> Well, you in got, that case, that changes you the gotta whole... you got to admire him for <laughs> getting some greens in there. Yeah, yes, because you need roughage. Now, yeah. Roger... This is how you know you're not listening to NPR, ladies and gentlemen. In no, case you were confused. I got it from NPR. You did? Yeah, they did a whole <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> where, But they, they said it quietly. It gives new meaning to the, to Terry Gross. Yeah, on, Terry on, Gross. on NPR, they went, the, you know, did you know that Roger... you used to like... To have a shit sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> You're a demented individual. Stay with us after this break. Yes. <laughs> Roger Roger Ebert called this movie. It's a great movie. One of the greatest of all American films. It is. It is. What it's 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 uh, reputation has grown over yeah. the years. It now finds itself on. Top twenty and and top, it, top fifty uh, all time. Stream somewhere? Do you know? Is oh, you can get, you can get it anywhere. Right, it's yeah. a wonderful movie. Sounds great. Do you have Apple TV or? Yeah, I do. Do it. Yeah, it's there. Um, Gary Cooper turned the roll down, thinking oh, it would be bad wow. for his image. Wow. Which I don't know if that were true, but I think I don't think Gary Cooper ever played a heel, did he? No. I mean, I think of High Noon and, and Sergeant yeah. York and Love in the Afternoon. And, and- Gregory Peck turned down High Noon. Right. And he said it was like the biggest mistake of his career. He did play a bad guy. Oh, Mangala. He played, and in, wasn't he the heavy in Duel in the Sun with oh, Jennifer maybe. Jennifer Jones? Do I have the, the Selznick movie? Am I wrong about this? Mm-mm. Why not if Gregory Peck was the heavy in Duel in the Sun? Not a success in 1950. Duel, of the sun. Duel in the Sun. Duel in the Sun. King Vidor movie. Not a success in 1955, Night of the Hunter, but considered a classic today that has influenced directors like Terrence Malick, David Lynch, and Martin Scorsese. Yeah. A wonderful performance. Have you seen it recently? Uh, No. He's absolutely terrifying in this picture. Um, Cape Fear 2. I mean, that makes a nice double bill. Yeah. Because he played a good psycho. And and it's like Scorsese had all of the surviving cast. He did. He brought Martin Balsam back and... um, Peck and uh, and Mitchum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think Polly Bergen. Did oh, she turn up too? Maybe. In there? Maybe okay. Maybe. Here's another one. 1957. We're going chronologically. Are you familiar with a film called Shortcut to Hell? Hmm. <laughs> ACDC. No. no. That was Highway. A now. remake of <laughs> This Gun for Hire about a killer who abducts a singer while seeking revenge on his gangster boss. Uh, William Bishop and Robert Ivers were some of the actors in it. I didn't know them. The director was Jimmy Cagney. Wow. The only picture that Cagney directed in his career. Wow. Not well received, not well reviewed. I, I read some reviews where they said they needn't bother to remaking this gun for hire. Because he had his own production company. I'm sure for he did. A while. How, sure how did. did you find these? Did you lay back and meditate for three hours? No, I go to Patreon and I find what I, I say to my wife, help me find an episode that we can actually pull off in 30 minutes or right. 35 minutes. Because people's suggestions are great, but some of them are so elaborate. Right. Someone wrote in and said, I'd love a mini episode about the career of John Williams. Well, we're not going to do John Williams' career in 35 minutes yeah. right. uh, or even an hour. So I try to find – yeah, and, and I, I Googled – uh, actors who directed once, and I found this wonderful yeah, website that, that, of course, I didn't write the name down, so yeah. I'm not going to credit them. But yeah, and then, yeah. And then you know, one stop shopping. Right. It doesn't. It pales in comparison to your research, I, of I, course. I, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, it's yeah. not as extensive. <laughs> 1957. You did not know Shortcut to Hell. I'm still no. impressed that you pulled. Uh, oh, lost one. Lost one out of your tush. Um, the movie is called Time Limit. 1957. I'm going to give you the cast. A good cast. Richard Widmark. Richard Basehart. Wow. Not to be confused with Richard Dysart. (laughs) Rip Torn. Huh. June Lockhart. And the aforementioned Martin Balsam. 
And this is a courtroom drama about a military lawyer assigned to defend a Korean War POW accused of treason. Widmark produced the film through his shingle, through his production company, but who directed it? Ooh, he directed once and once only. Mr. Rayburn? Doom, I'm working doom, on it. Doom, 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 doom. I'm, <laughs> are you stumped, Gilly Gill? Yes. Carl Malden. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah. I got it, Carl Malden. Yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave home without that answer. And so Carl again. Malden, in each one of his movies, would have a character say his actual name. Is that true? Yeah. Great trivia. Yeah, something Son like... Son of a bitch. Much, Muchki Muchkowitz or something That was his like real that. name? Yeah, Muchki Muchkowitz. <laughs> he would have it, like... All right, you got your work cut out for you. Carl Malden's real name. Sometimes, like, in, uh, you know, in a train station, you know... Uh, oh, really? Yeah. He would just find a reason to insert... Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. This is, this is a variation on the Hitchcock The kids tell thing. call those Easter eggs, I guess. Now. Yeah, that's right, in software. Yeah. I just and, sounded like I was 80. That t- <laughs> Well, I remember that TV show uh, Tony Curtis was on with Roger Oh, Moore. the Persuaders. They were yeah, in we a mentioned ho- that one. They were in a hotel lobby, and they were going, paging Bernie Schwartz. Paging oh, Bernie yeah, Schwartz. we talked about yeah. that on the show. Yes, that's cool. That's cool trivia. Well, we'll find that out because Paul never gave me my Gregory Peck duel in the sun answer. <laughs> Like, you know, he has this 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 tricky little thing that he does. He yeah. kind of starts, he, he injects himself yeah. into the oh, conversation, yes. hoping you'll forget yeah. the question that you asked him. And he's very, very deft, if well, I may say about it's, it. It's it's working with you gentlemen has taught me a lot. Don't call me a gentleman. <laughs> Don't call me a fireman. Let's see if anyone gets that reference. Um, 1958. Oh. Carl Malden. Yeah. What's <laughs> Carl Just Malden's be, real name that he would shove late. into the show? Malden George Sekulovich. Yeah. Seku, Sekulovich. How when, how would you find an, a reason Malden. to shove Malden? His yeah. first name was Malden? <laughs> I, I Actually, it think, looks like it says here M, M-L-A-D-E-N. So I don't know if that's a typo. I think in Malden. one Malden. army picture, you could hear one of the sergeants go, come here, Sekulovich. Sekulovich. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool shit. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. We've got to watch all the films and see if Carl it's Malden right. directed once. Richard Richard Widmark, by the way, an actor we've not talked about on oh, this show. Great actor. Yeah, terrific. Underrated. And fun in Judgment at Nuremberg and, and, oh, and, yeah. and uh, <laughs> Kiss Jud- of Death. Judgment at Nuremberg. Well, not is, a fun, fun film, but he's, <laughs> yeah. he gives a... Let me rephrase that. <laughs> and, he gives and, a very watchable, per- right. enjoyable performance. And he pushed <laughs> the old lady in the wheelchair. Kiss of Death. Yeah. Yeah. Pick up on South Street. Uh, there were a lot of and good stuff. I think, and I'm not going to ask Paul to look this up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I the building will be condemned. <laughs> Gilbert, <laughs> you don't even need to ask. It kicks in a minute. Uh, you know, <laughs> the Frank Statue Bush. of Liberty head will be in the beach as yeah. Paul. <laughs> uh, they Paul. blew it up. <laughs> Gilbert rides by on a horse looking for the research. Um. <laughs> That, you know, I mean, Frank Gorshin used yeah, to imitate. the best. And, and you know, he looked like Richard Whitmark. And I think in a movie, Richard Whitmark and Frank Gorshin were brothers. Paul, hit it. You got another Richard one. Wid- Wid- Richard Widmark right. and if, Frank Gorshin. If any Gorshin. of you want to learn uh, the violin or anything <laughs> before he comes in with the <laughs> If you'd like to do a collection of harpsichord music. Now would be a good time. Yes. Now I forgot to take up rare stamp collection. Richard Widmark and who? Is I don't even and know. Frank and Gorshin. Frank Gorshin. Oh, we're off to a good start here. You know, the thing about Gorshin, if I may digress, he could ma- he he would do those impressions and he would take on the, the face of yes. the person. Yeah. He, he would look like Turk funny. Douglas and he would look like Lancaster. Yeah. Am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. And every Burt Lancaster or Kurt Douglas you hear would be Frank Gorshin. So, pretty much. We wanted to know what they were in together. Yeah. Yes. For those who have, they, in, in, in this certain movie, they, pair, they played a pair of outlaw brothers, Billy and Johnny Gannon. In? Warlock. Warlock. Ah. Warlock. Uh, what, what's the date? Oh, of and, and the director what, of that was what it Howard was that Hawks? movie? Was this on you know South Street? Pick up on South Street. Pick, we have Samuel Fuller. That that's the one with Thelma Ritter. 
where they say about, you know, being an American, it goes, are you waving the flag at me? Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah. We don't talk about Sam Fuller either. Oh, yes. On the show, and we should. Um, you know who knew Sam Fuller uh, well was um, Larry Cohen. And we, oh, did, we wow. didn't ask him about him, but but Larry was entertaining enough to have back, uh, don't you think? Oh, yeah. People love that. He was episode. hysterical. Um, here's another one. 1958's The Buccaneer. The Buccaneer. I'll give you the synopsis. During the War of 1812, Gen- General Andrew Jackson has only 1,200 men left to defend New Orleans against the British. It starred Yul Brynner, Jean Lafitte, <laughs> Claire Bloom, Charles Boyer, Lorne Green, Charlton Heston played Jackson, and Buzz the Wonder Eel. I keep doing hard <laughs> fern. Uh, produced by Cecil B. DeMille. Huh. And he was supposed to direct the film because it was a it was a costume drama, yeah. a, a DeMille kind of production, a costume epic. He took ill, and his son-in-law at the time took the reins of the picture. Mr. Gottfried, who was that man? Ooh. We just mentioned him about 10 minutes, 20 minutes ago. Nope, we mentioned him. I, I lie, we mentioned him on the previous recording. Right. Oh. I'll give you a hint. He hugged you. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Not Smokey Robinson. <laughs> he hugged me. He's not, he hugged he's you. not Greek. Anthony Quinn hugged me. Correct. Anthony Quinn. Yes. Anthony Quinn directed The Buccaneer. Wow. His only directorial effort. The, uh, you, you mentioned some of the people in it, but it goes deep here. Lauren yeah. Green. I said Lauren Green. Did you say Lauren Green? And, uh, Lauren Green Inger was Stevens. Inger Stevens. Inger I think Stevens. Inger Stevens is still alive. Oh. she worth trying? Maybe. Somebody suggested the other day that we should call, and I think she's a recluse, Tuesday Weld. That oh, would that be would good. be a great one. Yeah. I don't know that she's made any kind of public appearance. And She and I have they, had an ongoing they, conversation. David, have you? Yes. David Steinberg. <laughs> Fuck that. Sick, man. That's, that's good news. David Steinberg. <laughs> Fuck uh, Tuesday well. Okay. Yeah. okay. There you go. Turn it into NPR again. Yeah, did we use that to get her on the show somehow? I don't see it? how. I don't see how that wor- does anything but work against us. Oh, yes. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm coming Tuesday. This will be on his album. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tuesday. The double entendre. I'm coming Tuesday. This will be on his album with the Paul William Shirley Temple bit. <laughs> so look at this. James Cagney, Carl Malden, Anthony Quinn. I'm stumping you. Yeah. One after the other. Did you know this picture, the Buccaneer? No. Okay. Not one of the greatest American movies of all time, apparently. Turning the card. <laughs> uh, here we go. Gangster story in 1960. That sounds familiar. You just sounded like Kevin Car- Kevin McCarthy saying, well, that's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> what was that story? Uh, that was where um, on on the uh, Aristocrat CD. Oh, right. I, I tell a story and I interrupt it with, you know, he, you know, he's fucking his dog and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, this was a common holiday practice for character actor Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> that is a Gilbert Gottfried segue if ever I heard one. And someone who knew Kevin McCarthy said, uh, you know, so uh, do you know who Gilbert Gottfried is? And he goes, yes. And he goes, well, he, he was doing a joke where he said, you know, a, a guy is fucking his dog and the, the son is going down on his mother and 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 uh, he says it's a common practice for character actor Kevin McCarthy. And he goes, well, that's offensive. And he goes, well, yeah, Gilbert tends to. And he goes, I'm not a character actor. I'm a lead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. That's great. <laughs> He's probably told it three times, but <laughs> I don't care. Great. You know Kevin McCarthy. The, yeah. He was the lead From in the uh, Body Snatchers. Invasion, invasion, right. Proving that he was, in fact, the lead. Right. Invasion of the That's Body right. Snatchers. <laughs> I love that story. Can't get enough of it. Here we go. <laughs> Gangster and killer Jack Martin. Jack Martin, Gilbert, is on the run and holds out, holds out, <laughs> suddenly I'm Canadian, in a small town. It starred the director... Vic Tabak. Ah! Oh. Vic Tabak was not the director. It starred the oh. director, comma, 
also Vic Tabak. <laughs> it starred an actress named Carol Grace that the director of this film would go on to marry. Or, in fact, he had married her earlier, a year earlier before they made the film together. Uh, the other actor is Gary Wahlberg. And I bring up Gary Wahlberg because he played Speed on the Odd Couple series. Do you remember that actor with white hair? He was also on Quincy. Oh, He played okay. Lieutenant Monaghan on Quincy. Um, this is a low-budget production uh, with a shot with a skeleton crew, a five-person crew in Anaheim. And your hint is that the director married co-star Carol Grace. And you do an impression of this person, and this is the one film that he directed. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Isn't it good? It you is. looked it up. I looked it up. Okay, you're going to give us some information about it in a minute. Or uh, some, like a clue on the actor. Also, he had to rewrite the script every day uh, because he hated the script. He was broke. He was so broke from gambling debts. There's kind of a clue. He was so broke from gambling debts that he accepted the role of both star and director for a measly 2500 bucks. Oh. You want a clue? Yes. You did an impression of him as we were interviewing Felix Cavallari. Oh, well, not not James Mason. Uh... Who would you do an impression of while in person while while talking to Felix Cavallari? Oh, God. While talking to Felix Cavallari. Walter Matthau. Walter Matthau Walter is the Matthau. correct answer. He directed this picture, Gangster Story, in 1960, and never directed again. Wow. Another movie you didn't know. Yeah. Felix. Felix. <laughs> I'm directing Gangster Story, Felix. <laughs> it's the 10th floor. <laughs> uh, 1960, here's another one. Okay. We stumped him, we stumped him on Walter Matthau. I don't know how. Here's the last one. This is 1960, and this is a movie that we talked about when Frank Conniff was in here with us. But your memory is so bad yes. of previous episodes. <laughs> but, do, Paul, I, 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 I interrupt before I jump ahead. Did you have anything on Gangster there Story? There was almost nothing about it. Wikipedia had wow. just a page or two. It's oh, just, you're just using that as an excuse. <laughs> I know how you work. Maybe. I know how you work, Rayburn. <laughs> this film, Gilbert... Mr. Gottfried, and these are, by the way, these are films you will not be choosing on on, uh, no. on Turner Classic Movies anytime soon. This is The Beatniks uh, <laughs> <laughs> from 1960. A young singer's shot at fame is threatened by Hoodlum Pals. Yes, I said Hoodlum Pals. It stars unknowns Peter Breck, Peter Breck, Bob Wells, Tony Travis, Charles Stroud. It was co-written by Arthur Julian, a very prolif- prolific writer, who wrote episodes of Bewitched, Hogan's Heroes, and F Troop, among many, many other things. And he must have known Ed Weinberger because he wrote episodes of Amen and George C. Scott wow. show Mr. President. So Arthur Julian was one of the writers of this show, this show, of this feature. But do you know who the director was? And he's somebody whose name comes up all the time on this podcast. Hmm. Now, what hint can I give you here? I could give you the hint. I could say Rankin Bass is a hint. Uh, Jim Backus? No. I don't think Jim Backus directed a feature. I could be wrong, but Uh, that would be good trivia. But I didn't find him. No. A very, very famous, famous voice. And his name comes up all the time on this show. Hmm. Paul? Paul Freeze. Paul Freeze. Wow. Yeah, we had it with Conniff. Wow. And I put it down on the card again. I said he won't remember. But I don't know. I'll Paul, bring it back. I'm not familiar with Paul Freeze. Paul Freeze. There, fill him in, Gil. Yeah, he he was uh, one of the top voiceover guys. Yeah. Years ago, and he I think he was the voice of the Cyclops. In the Cyclops with Lon Chaney Jr. Wow. I believe wow. that's true. Wow. Yeah, wow, that's his great. voice is also, if you could go to Disney World, you or I think Disneyland too, you can hear it as the voice of the Haunted Mansion ride. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. and wasn't he Boris Batinoff? 
I think he was yeah. Boris Badenov. Yeah. Paul Fries. Is he, is, uh, he's probably not still He is deceased, us. or he would have been on he this show. Like he would be great. And the oh, we, 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 we would have snatched him. Have, we, have we tried opening any channels to the to the beyond? Is, have we you know, people have down? people write that. They say, why don't you have Gilbert do impressions <laughs> and, interview, <laughs> and interview dead celebrities? But, like, how, how, how long is that joke going to yeah. play out? Well, it, it also plays to our sentimental side, which we don't want to overdo. Yes. No. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Frank, while you're out there, do you have any Paul Freeze that you can play uh, uh, on YouTube as we kill time so that Paul Rayburn and some of our listeners can can acquaint themselves with the, with the voice of Paul Freeze? He did a lot of voiceovers. He did a lot of... He was the Burgermeister, Meister Burger. Are you familiar with uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town with Mickey Rooney? Yeah, I... Here's Paul Fries. When hinges creak in doorless chambers and strange and frightening sounds echo through the halls, whenever candlelights flicker where the air is deathly still, that is the time when ghosts are present, practicing their terror with ghoulish delight. Well, so let's buy boat ticket and go back home. <laughs> buy ticket and go back home? <laughs> Not Natasha, <laughs> where is your pride, your professional integrity? <laughs> we steal tickets and go back home. Pillsbury Crescents have so much butter flavor, they're hard to That's forget. That's him too. Try butter flavored Crescents. Fresh and hot. And Pillsbury says it best. <laughs> hey, who did that? I did. Suspended in the timelessness of inner space are the thought waves of my first impressions. How about that? Wow. They will be our only source of contact once you have passed beyond the limits of normal magnification. Now do you have an idea who Paul Freeze was? Yeah, that's great. It, in that first clip, didn't wasn't there a lot of Boris Karloff in that? It sounded to me. It, yeah, it sounded, Orson Welles. It sounded like Vincent Price. Vincent a, Price. A little maybe. Vincent Price. Yeah. He was a little Orson Welles like. But that was great. Yeah. Oh, he was one of so the he top guys. he would he would have been when when would be the peak of his career. I've got something on him here. Was he with a the Mercury Theater? Why, don't, my, why am I thinking that he was a part of Wells and Hausman and, and, and all of those people? I could be completely wrong and be thinking of somebody else. Anyway, he directed this picture for reasons unknown. Uh, it was one of the movies that came up on, on Conniff's show, Mystery Science Theater. He was in The War of the Worlds. He must have been on the... Oh, the there you go. Okay. There you go. Actor, I knew he was involved with Wells. Actor, composer, songwriter, voiceover artist, and author. A real renaissance wow. man. A guy who could Great do anything. Guy. And uh, we would have had him here in a heartbeat. Paul Freeze. All those great classics. Oh, yeah. The, 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 uh, uh, Alexander Scorby. Do you remember him? Yes, yes. He passed away. And and I, I think there was that another voiceover guy who was always like the voice of God. Oh, we talked about him when we had uh, Larry Kenny in here. There, there was uh, Norman the Rose. Was, that Norman Rose. Yeah. Norman Rose was the voice of God. Yeah, very good. <laughs> anyway. Great stuff. So those are that's the first wave of actors who only directed once. I found about another fifteen, but we'll oh, save them. We'll save yeah, them for a future show. Kind of a fun premise. Oh yeah, for a show. So thank you, Ray Gustini. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. You lived up to expectations. Slow as <laughs> yeah, you yeah. you haven't answered any <laughs> one of the questions. I, I didn't want to disturb those expectations. Yeah. And you learned who Paul Freeze was. And I did. It was so worth it right there. This was a productive evening <laughs> all around. GG. Uh, and this has been Gilbert and Frank's amazing colossal obsession. That's what you say. Hey, Jude. <laughs> Don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. And, and remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. Hey Jude, don't be afraid.